let's see. Let's get get the warm up going here. First time doing one of these where I'm just gonna film it at normal speed and do a do a warm up. Who knows how long this will take? If I'll even share it, save it. Let's see. Trying to get warmed up Something I gotta start doing more often is just getting in here and getting loose before I jump into my drawings because I've been just going straight into everything and feeling tight and not comfortable, not ready to go. So now I'm thinking I'll start doing this more often. It seems like uh, People that are a lot more successful than I am are doing this where they warm up and they they're ready to go. So let's uh, start trying this. See how this goes. I mean, these are things I'm gonna have to do quickly so that I'm not chewing up my whole day just doing these warm ups, but. This will be, maybe this will be worthwhile. Something I can use later. It's all skill building, right?
So I hope this isn't too boring for those that might check it out. I know I'm not talking a whole lot, but uh, normally I'm listening to music while I do this. Sometimes I'm singing along, sometimes I'm just jamming out, but typically it's not this quiet. Um, and I don't have anything on right now because I don't want YouTube or any other platform kicking me off, kicking the video out because it's got, you know, copyrighted music going on. Plus it's not fair to the, uh, to the artists that recorded the music, you know, to use their stuff without compensating them somehow. And I honestly don't know how I would do that being I'm not wealthy, <laughs> not by any means, but um, yeah, don't want to get in any trouble, don't want to get the stuff kicked off, don't want to upset anybody with using their stuff out there, okie dokie. So, so yeah, just getting the uh, Getting some pencils in here. Maybe I'm getting too tight with it, I don't know. Try not to. That's one thing that I know I have an issue with in some of my work is just get a little bit too tight very quickly. And there's not, sometimes there's not much energy in, in the work because of that. And that is something I desperately need to work on. I hadn't drawn a zombie in a while, so I thought, what the heck, I'll just get in here and see what happens. So I'm going to do some inking on this once I get it's to a point where I feel feel okay with it. So I got a reference photo up over here on my iPad. I'm, I'm trying not to just duplicate the thing directly. I'm trying to, I don't know, embellish a bit, make it my own a little bit, not just copying a photo. So 
So hopefully that comes through. We'll see, won't we? We'll just see what comes through here. is I'm going to take my, or one of my pens. I've got this Pilot Parallel Pen, and I've got a couple of them. I've, I've got one filled with some permanent ink, or some, you know, waterproof ink, and I've got one here that I've been using recently that's got just the, uh, the non-waterproof stuff that comes from pilot with the pen um, I used it recently for a, a, a Frazetta tribute piece that I did and it kind of bled around on me a little bit when I went to add some white highlights to the work the piece and uh, I, don't know, I guess it turned out okay Um, it, 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 uh, it activated the, when I did the white ink on top of the, the pen work, it activated the, uh, the black, which is in here, and sort of gave me these, uh, cool blue bleated, bleated out, bled out areas. I don't know how, how to say that exactly, but it bled on me a little bit and, uh, you know, you use that to your advantage to uh, create sort of some washed areas. You know, get you some mid-tones. Um, so I guess that was okay. I guess that was cool. But there were definitely some things about it that uh, were a little tough to control. I wasn't expecting it to bleed with the uh, white ink. I don't know why I wasn't expecting that, but maybe it's because I hadn't really used it, used this ink before. Um, the other, like I said, I've got others of these that I've filled with um, waterproof ink, and uh, didn't really have that issue with it, so. Because I hadn't used it in a while, I was a little surprised. wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't expecting it, but it turned out okay. I mean, it was a sketch, so that's that's okay. Like this, this is just a warm up drawing, sketchy piece that doesn't have to be perfect. It's not. For publication, it's not meant for a commission or anything. It's just a piece I'm doing for warming up, warming up, and uh, trying to get more familiar with some of these tools I have. Because, like this one, I don't. I've only done one drawing with this ink. That Death Dealer for Zeta Tribute thing was the uh, first time using it, using this ink. And this is um, watercolor paper, so I get some bleeding effects and all that. That's okay. I can work with the work with it in the in the paper here. So let's see. Let's get. Nice thing about these these pins, uh, how well you can see that is, it's got a it's two narrow blades, two flat blades, and um, the ink passes between them from a cartridge that's inside the barrel here. Um, so you can turn it on its edge to get a, a 
thinner line, or you can use the flat of the blades to get a thicker area. So that's nice. You get a, a variety of strokes out of this pin. Get an interesting character to the, uh, the stroke, the pin strokes. Which is always something I'm interested in is character in the pin stroke because a lot of my work I've I get real tight. Like I say, I uh, I'll get my pencil lines down and I'll go very very tight with it, and sometimes it's good to loosen up. So this. This stuff kind of forces me to, to loosen up a bit. You see that? You can smudge this stuff too. Being watercolor paper, um, it does soak in, but it doesn't soak in immediately. You can get some smudging going too. And, um, create different um, textures that way too, off this paper. And by the way, this is um, not expensive paper. It's, Kans I think it's a cheap Canson pad that I picked up at a Michael's store, I believe. And there's always a coupon with those guys, so you can go in and get a pretty good discount on these things. Here I'm trying to carve out a little negative space to indicate some matted hair. I'll come back too with uh, some weight later and get even more of these crazy hairs in here. Pretty exciting, huh? This is, uh, this is what I did. So I have had a uh, Patreon page for just a little over a year now, and it's, um, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the people who who were backers on there. I um, really appreciate their support. I've been putting, I'd been putting a lot of videos up for them and, uh, you know, only for them. There's a ton of that, a ton of video that uh, I haven't been able to share to the public that I've just been sharing with the Patreon backers, and um, for a while there, I had I had seven backers, and uh, like I said, I really do appreciate them very much. But uh, then it went down to six. Somebody had uh, financial issues, and well, I do I understand that. I mean, we all go through those times. Um, but it got me thinking. You know, I'm doing all these videos that only a handful of people are seeing and, you know, I'm not getting a ton of money out of, out of, out of Patreon. So I just, I've recently decided that, um, I'm going to close that down 
and uh, do something else with that video. And, you know, just, I think a lot of that's going to end up getting shared with just everybody to help sort of build, build an audience maybe. Who knows? Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of content that uh, I haven't shared. Some of that's been projects that uh, I wasn't supposed to share to the public for a while that they got to see because, well, there was only a handful of them and that was not a problem. But... Uh, most of those projects are public now, if not all of them. The ones that aren't, obviously, I'll I'll keep uh, quiet on those for now. But what I can share, I think I will. Shortly, I'm uh, just. I think I'm going to close the close the page down here at the end of this month, at the end of February, and. Uh, so a lot of that stuff will just become public soon. Not all of it, but like I said, a lot of it will. And hopefully people will enjoy that. Like, you know, this here, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and share it. Since I'm close, since I'm planning to close that down, I don't think there's going to be a, an outcry of foul play or anything. At least I hope not. I mean, I've kept all that stuff just for them for for quite a while. But we'll see. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, no one's too upset with me. If I do that. Like I was saying, you can get a real variety of stroke and some texturing even out of this uh, this crazy pin. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's fun to do. It's very different from what I'm used to. And I think trying different things is a really good idea for anybody that's getting comfortable with what they're doing or not sure what it is they want to try or want to do for sure you gotta gotta experiment see what works for you what you like to do what's comfortable because you never know until until it's in your hand how it's gonna feel how it's gonna go See, I got some ink on the finger there now, so I can smudge it around a little bit. Create a little mess, make a little texture. Zombies are fun because you can just kind of make a mess and still have it work, you know. Um, no one's going to call you out if a 
hair's in the wrong place or it doesn't resemble somebody exactly the way they'd like it to, you know? Unless you're doing, you know, a commissioned portrait or what have you from a specific scene or a portrait of somebody, you know? And that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just having some fun, warming up. I should probably acknowledge a couple of artists that I've seen use these pins that really inspired me to give it a shot. Um, the first guy I saw using these that I can remember was uh, Brett Weldelli. Um, and I first heard of him from the uh, Surrogates comic that, I, that he worked on. At least I think that was what I first saw his work on, but um, yeah, I was looking for different things on uh, YouTube once and, f and ran across uh, some demos he was doing of uh, these pens. He uses these, um, these different inks uh, made by Ranger. Um, they're called distress inks. That's what they are, distress inks. And um, so I was checking that out and I thought, well, this is pretty cool. And so I rushed out and <laughs> as I do frequently and uh, just had to get, get some and try them. And um, you can do some pretty neat stuff with that, with those inks. They, they come in lots of colors. The only problem with them, and I mean, it's not a problem necessarily, but 
my issue with them is they're not waterproof, so it's like working with, uh, sort of like working with um, watercolor in that uh, you lay a piece, you lay it, lay it down and hope it stays where you put it. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And, but a lot of beautiful colors there in their, in their sets. And I have, I had several bottles of, of it, different colors. I think it's pretty cool stuff. Um, I've done a lot with it though, because like I said, when I first tried it, I was like, oh, this isn't doing exactly what I'd hoped. But nevertheless, I think it's a cool product. And um, uh, I did a little, a, a little painting experiment with it once and uh, it turned out okay. I mean, it sold. It wasn't a finished piece, but it it sold, and uh, that's cool, you know. Um, and then the other artist who I've been watching a lot of his. I mean, he doesn't have a ton of videos, but I've been re-watching them and watching them and watching them and just really trying to see what's going on. And, you know, by osmosis, try to pick up some of what he's doing. And that's uh, Jason Sean Alexander. He's got just incredible videos of him using these pins, both with uh, the non-waterproof stuff and with his, uh, uh, with waterproof ink as well. Um, he's using uh, Rapidograph ink and uh, refilling the, cartridges or you know they have these third-party add-on cartridges you can get to that you know you can you can fill those guys up um, and I've done that and boy it's a mess it's messy but um, you know <laughs> that's okay because this is it's a messy medium ink you know but he does some fantastic stuff with it just incredible incredible stuff um, as many of you probably already know but yeah he's got some videos on YouTube you can go check out and see how this is really supposed to be done as you know by a guy who is a master really at his craft he's just an incredible painter fantastic comic artist just awesome with multiple um, mediums. He's just incredible. To say I have a lot of respect for him would be an understatement. The guy is just fantastic. And I've, I've met him. I met him at Monster Palooza a couple years ago. And he is an awesome dude on top of that. He's just a really nice guy. So... Check out his work, check out his videos, buy his stuff. He's he's awesome. He is awesome. But yeah, those are a couple guys that I saw using these and really inspired me to check them out and see what I could do too. Um, obviously I'm not on the same level as uh, Jason, but You're gonna see me probably do some splattering here later as I get into this, and that's something he does a bunch. Um, I've tried to incorporate some of the tools and techniques he uses as well. Uh, not quite to the same uh, level, of course, but th that whole tapping thing there, that dabbing, that's something I've seen him do a bunch in the videos, and um, the guy is just talented, incredibly smart, and cool dude. And um, anyway, I admire his work. I admire him. Seems like a nice guy. Alrighty. 
maybe. This is turned out okay, I think, for a warm up. I think we got something here. I feel like I'm ready to go. Too bad. All right, let's get some more of this stuff going. Okay, <laughs> smudged that all right out of <laughs> right out of existence there, didn't I? Okay. some of the white coming back in through here too because that will that will change things add more hair detail I guess if I even need it the more I look at this the more I think you know there need to there needs to be areas of just dark mass you know give him some weight you can see there Running over this texture, the quality of line gets really interesting. This is a uh, cold press watercolor paper, by the way. And um, it's not as rough as some of the other cold presses I've got. I've got some Kilimanjaro that's ordering on rough rather than cold press, but different manufacturers, they do different things in their molds, so you don't know until you get a pad or you open the pad up at the store, you know, which sometimes there's open ones. Sometimes it's just, Hey, you got to buy it and figure it out if you really want to use it. Oh yeah, so this is a, a little mall stick type thing. I'm working in a, a little box um, on my drawing table that the uh, pads will sit on and I can use it to sort of make, you know, measurements for squaring off a, a drawing if I got a certain area I got to work within or Whatever, I got this idea from Alan Williams. Um, keeps my hand out of the ink, out of the pencil, whatever I'm working in, you know, like a painter would. So I use this to rest my hand on. It just keeps me out of the, out of the drawing. For the most part.
Let's finish off his silhouette here, and then I can start doing some other fun here. By the way, these pins, they make them in different diameters. This one here is the two, 2.4 millimeter. And they've got, uh, let's see, a 1.5, which is even smaller than this one. And they go all the way up to, uh, what is it, five, five point something? Anyway, so they got wider ones and then uh, Um, yeah, so they got wider ones. They, they just come out with a couple of new sizes too. And, uh, I haven't tried those yet. But I got one of these sets that was the, like the original four. This is like the, uh, next to smallest size. But they have these bigger ones too. That's where I have... That's where I got them. I'm not sure where I got them sitting right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not in my um, new office yet. I'm because we're doing some renovating. I am hanging out in what used to be our grandkids' room, but it's also full of flooring and other renovation materials that we've got sitting around here. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to switch over here and use something else because I got some big areas here to fill in and this thing is not, <laughs> not the most efficient thing to use for that. So I'm going to set this guy over here for a minute. Let's get some FW ink and I just use these old medical prescription lids for uh, for ink palettes because you know what the hell so this here this ink I'm about to drop down here is uh, it's acrylic based so it is waterproof so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill in some big areas and then I'm gonna come back and probably do a little bit of splatter work too because it's a zombie there's got to be some splatter and when I do that, I'll show you this fancy tool that I got for doing splatter. It was um, something I saw uh, George Pratt use. So, yeah. Let's see. 
my liner brush ready here, and I got a little flat I'm going to use. Get myself a paper towel. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. So I'm going to get in here and just fill in some of these areas that are. bigger and need to be filled in black. So I could have got a little bigger brush. <laughs> I think this is a, like a quarter inch flat. And naturally I didn't plan for the brushwork, so there's no water to rinse anything off in because I'm a freaking idiot. one of the things about not taping your work down. It may buckle a little bit. You can see it, I don't know, maybe you can't, but it's starting to uh, bow up down here a little bit. All right. Let's see. Job cutting out, cutting out the silhouette there. Am I? Well, it's a sketch, right? Is that what we're calling it? We're gonna call it a sketch. I'm sure someone out there will say, "Oh, you spent too much time on that to be a sketch," but it's still kind of loose. So this is um, a nine, I think it's a nine by 12. Yeah. Went into the cabinet looking for a 11 by 14. So part of the, the thinking on the size was, well, if I go bigger, then I can be looser and still have room to be, you know, to be loose, but I didn't, I didn't see an 11 by 14 in this size, so, or in this paper, so here we are. All right. Okay, so I will be back in a moment. I gotta wash this brush out so I don't ruin it. And then we'll do some splatter. Be right back for some splatter.
Alrighty, so here's that fancy tool I was mentioning. Um, this is a splatter brush and Kemper Tools. That's who makes this guy. Now this one I found out about uh, by watching a video that uh, George Pratt did where he demoed this ink this ink drawing, and he used this guy right here to make this splatter. Now, so I'm gonna get some in here. This creates a nice mid-tone. I'm going the wrong direction here. Okay, here we go. It doesn't look like I got much ink on there. So, let's go back here so I can get some ink on the, the bristles. Now, a lot of guys use toothbrush, and uh, that is awesome, but it's not something that I'm comfortable with. Because it's so damn messy. Not that this isn't messy, but oh, there we go. Um, you know, you end up wearing it, staining your fingers and get, getting it on everything. This thing is a little more controlled. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. But I get a, a more consistent uh, spray out of it than I feel I can get by using my hands and a toothbrush. But that's just me. I'm, maybe I'm just not as practiced at it or as skilled at it. Or maybe I'm just too precious with trying to stay clean while I work. It's getting there. Definitely some spots I need to really get in there and hit like this, like this eye right here. That eyelid's just too. There we go. There's a bit more there. Let's get some more around, around this eye. Yeah. Okay, we need some more. Here, about up here where I broke the. There we go. So, see how that works. The bristles pull against this little bar, and then they flick the ink. This is um, acrylic ink, by the way, so it's it's pretty permanent. So that's pretty good, I think. I think now I will take the spatter brush, which is what this guy is, and I will clean it off real quick. And when I come back, we'll do some white highlighting and finish this guy up.
Okay, so as I mentioned, I got that brush. Uh, well, I got that brush from Amazon, but I found out about that brush by watching um, George Pratt, that splatter, bl splatter brush. Spatter? Splatter? The brush. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. I'm going to dab this on here and get... Make sure everything's dry. And then I go in here and we're gonna add some white highlights back in. All right, so now this, big white out pin. Now this, I, this is something that Jason Sean Alexander uses and uh, I have used a little bit. I was gonna clean the tip off here. I get it flowing. I get a little squeeze. There we go. Okay. So, like I said, this this one I got from uh, Jason Sean Alexander. He uses these a lot. So he'll he'll get in here and he'll uh, you know use the white out to get back to back to white. But he'll also kind of dab at it to push it back too so it's not completely white so you'll get some gray get some gray tones out of it too but you see it kind of spill I'm not very good with it because I haven't used it much but you can see here what you can do get your whites back get you know add some highlights in Basically clean up some of that splattery stuff. You can also use um, acrylic paint or gouache. I've seen um, George Pratt use paint to do the, to come back in and get his his highlights back. Um, but this is something Sean uses, or Jason uses, rather, sorry. And uh, seems to work pretty well for him. So, give it a try here. So, you can add, add white highlights in. Get some of these hairs back, maybe. And smudge it around, too. Actually, <laughs> I don't know that I want to smudge. I don't want to do too much of this because I think some of this looks pretty good as it is, you know, even with the spatter. Bring the teeth back just a little bit. So something else he'll do, uh, that Jason will do, is he'll add lines in here to get some energy back into the into the drawing. Add some motion in. He's a lot better at it than I am, obviously. But uh, But then I've also seen him do this and then come back and splatter it again and paint on it some more. And so perhaps that's what we'll do here. Let's see. I think I'll use my uh, Pentel pocket brush pen here and see what I can do to clean some of this up.
Yeah, I might have overdone it. <laughs> That's a sketch, right? Is that what we're saying? We're saying it's a sketch, right? That's what I'm saying. That's my story, and I'm going to stick to it, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what I will do. I will stick to my story. See, I'm kind of dragging this over that white out, and I'm getting sort of a, a dry brush. Because I'm going very lightly over it, just a little bit. I want to get rid of some of the sloppiness here. Boy, I don't know what I'm doing with that white out, that white out pin, but that's all right. Maybe I just need some more. I just need to go back over with the splatter at this point. Yeah, it's just to add some motion into the piece. It's not meant to be a perfect design element. I mean, you saw how randomly I just ran that over there like a crazy person. Which is funny because I watch watch Jason do it in the videos and it's he makes it look so easy. But it obviously is not. But that's the mark of uh, somebody with skill. And skills you get by practicing. That's that's the key to everything is do the work, put the work in. Put in the work. Which I'll be honest is not something I've always done. I've been pretty lazy in my life with this stuff. At times. shape back. Let's see if we get this back a little bit too. as much splatter and spatter in here as I was expecting or hoping for so Let's do a little dry brush texturing this could use a little more something maybe I should drag this on here a little bit too yeah the hair could use a little more splatter spatter splatter splatter There we go. That's looking a little better. Push that back a little bit. I think that looks all right. Oh, this got a little out of hand right here. So this is a Pentel pocket brush pen. Also great for sketching. You can get some different dry brushing things with it if you really gentle with it and take your time.
I like this pen. I've, I've heard people complain that it's uh, the ink is kind of grayish, not quite black, as black as they'd like, but uh, I don't know, I like it. I think it works pretty good. You know, if you're not gonna use a traditional brush, then I think these are okay. Oh, what's he missing here? It's just, eyebrow seems a little light. Having his eyes scrunched up like that. Seems like there should be more of it. Okay, I like that a little better. Let's see what we got here. Let's bring this down some more. Yeah, I like that. Let's trail these guys through here a little bit more too. Okay. See what you get. You get a buildup of ink and <laughs> the big whiteout stuff, which I don't know if, if that's acrylic based or what that is, but do not swallow or inhale. That's a good idea. Let's don't put that in our mouths. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I think that looks okay. And I think, I think that's gonna do it for this. Well, I guess I'll put my name on it since I am the perpetrator of this one. Let's see. Oh boy, the cap wasn't on this one very tightly. So I, also, I love to use these uh, Copic Multiliner pens. They are waterproof and they're Copic proof. So if you want to draw with them in black, which is what these are, then you can take your Copic markers over the top of them and they won't, they won't blur out. They won't smudge. Let's see here. Oh, this pen's drying up. I guess that's what happens when you don't get the caps on tight, tightly. Whoops. Okay. There we go. There you have it. Thanks for watching.